Uh, what are we going to learn here? The first thing is what is a broken wing butterfly? And we'll call it BYB uh, for now. Uh, secondly, how to identify uh, BYBs or broken wing butterfly strikes and strike prices that we'll use. Uh, number three, best time to place a broken wing butterfly, different ways to adjust broken wing butterflies. And, and again, this is, this, is, uh, this is an area that I'm going to be delving into and, uh, and learning, uh, especially how to adjust these. You know, I, I have pretty much one, one method to adjust these, and, and I'll be talking about that, but uh, I want to learn the, the real and right way to do it uh, to, to make the most amount uh, of, of profit here. We'll be placing one, two, one, one, two, one, and, and uh, one, three, two back, uh, butter, um, broken wing butterflies. And these are uh, different ways to stage the options, okay? And uh, I'll talk about that um, uh, in detail, all right? Uh, yes, all this is going to be recorded, and you'll receive a replay for this, all right? Okay, and then a uh, detailed broken wing butterfly exit strategy as well. So uh, with that, I uh, just want to uh, say that, that please stick with me to the end. There's a lot of valuable information and uh, uh, bonus information that I want to share with you today. So stick with me and, um, uh, and also, you know, try to turn off all the distractions. Uh, you know, it's great to, um, to focus on, on what we're doing here, take some notes. And uh, what I'm asking is, is that you would hold off on your questions until the very end. Uh, and that way uh, we can get through the, the information and then I promise you that I will answer every single one of your questions, okay? So um, the first thing here is why are you here? Um, and, I, and I set up three reasons here why you could be here. Uh, why, why would you be here? Uh, you don't, you're interested in learning new strategies that'll take your trading performance to the next level. Maybe you can uh, trade for a living one day. Uh, number two, you've seen, heard about, read about, and others making money. Uh, trading and you know you can do it too, but you're just not seeing your account grow fast enough. And number three, you've tried different trading strategies that you thought, okay, this is it, only to discover it's just not getting you to the place of consistent results. Okay. So um so with that, let's take a poll here for uh why you're here. And uh let me know uh, the main reason. Okay. And a lot of us, you know, want to, want to learn new strategies. We're, we're constantly trying to learn and, and perfect our trading better. Uh, some of us, you know, uh, just haven't made it and, and haven't been able to, to get to that place where you're, you're seeing your account grow and you're, you're not, you're not seeing, you know, big blow ups or seeing big blow ups and, <clears throat> and you want to eliminate that stuff. Uh, but, but, for whatever reason you're here, you know, I'm going to support you and, and try to answer any questions that you guys have uh, for us. OK, so so the biggest uh, the biggest one is all the above. Yep. Uh, yep. That's uh, that's typical. That's good. OK. And then uh, we'll give this uh, one more minute here. So put in your uh, put in your uh, remarks and uh, I will share it. All right. Okay. So let's close it. You should be able to see it. So um, most of you said uh, all of the above uh, with close seconds to, oh, they're still going. I closed it. Did I close it? There we go. I closed it. Okay. Um, interested in learning new strategies and finding the right strategy that provides consistent results. Yep. So uh, makes sense. Makes complete sense. Okay, guys, uh, I'm a regular guy, you know, just love to trade and finally got a chance to do this full time. And this is my, uh, my wife and myself on the left, my, my uh, kids uh, in the middle and my parents with me a long time ago when I was doing my, uh, my MBA. All right. So um, as we get into this, right, mindset is one of the, one, one of the most important things that you can have in trading. And um, this is a this is a book here. You can see it. Yeah, you can see it. Uh, that um, <clears throat> that I that I've recently read, and a lot of people have recommended this. It's called Trading in the Zone by um, by Mark Douglas, and I recommend this to anyone. And it's really all about um, having the mindset, having a p very positive mindset in trading, regardless of where the market goes or what it does or how you trade it. And um, 
it's 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 very very important to have that okay to have that mindset so let's just imagine here what it would feel like if most of your trades were winners month after month and it would be confirmed by watching the size of your account grow so just picture that right uh, secondly <clears throat> becoming the trader that no longer takes large losses but consistently trades according to a proven trade plan that is profitable over time allowing you to grow your account month over month um, and I can tell you that uh, I still have you know those 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 uh, mountains and valleys right that that come uh, with trading and uh, my goal this year has to become uh, consistent okay and and uh, you know I've, I've done it for many years you know but but from time to time I get this you know boom blow up and uh, uh, and those those blow ups actually help you learn too as long as you can you can you're still solvent and uh, you're able to uh, you're able to push through and never quit okay because that's that's really what it takes to, to be be an expert in any in anything that you go out to uh, to do okay trading is no different all right so let's talk about First, uh, why these are uh, why, one of the reasons why we use options, especially selling options, because uh, the decay in options are always going in your favor if you're a seller, right? If you're a buyer, you have to you know you have to do different things uh, to to gain a you know you you have to you have to get the direction right, all right? With uh, with option selling, you don't necessarily have to get the direction right. However, there's there's things that you can do. Uh, to to make it much more consistent and uh, get get returns on this over and over and over again. All right. So uh, first of all, let's let's talk about the decay. Uh, and these are call options. And from 68 to 33 days, the rated decay is about 34 percent during that period of time. Uh, after that, 33 to five days is 57 percent, and uh, five five days to expiration, it's 100 percent. So so as you get closer and closer to uh, the expiration, the the uh, the options, uh, the rate of decay really really ramps up and 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 goes into uh, overdrive, and so uh, so I'm going to be talking about more short term uh, options, three to five days. However, uh, I am looking at this for monthly uh, trades too, just because of the the hedge uh, ca characteristics of it. Right. All right. So profitability factors. Implied volatility. This is an ideal setup with volatility moving lower uh, <clears throat> while in the trade, uh, you know, and you get in high volatility. So placing the trade with volatility when it's high uh, and then decreases will significantly uh, reduce the initial premium collected, which means uh, you're, you're going to profit much quicker, right? Number two is theta. Theta is the rate of change uh, that, you, uh, that you have. Uh, and uh, this is a big factor, especially for short-term options, which I just uh, which I just outlined here, right? And then uh, number three here is market direction. So when you put on uh, when you put on a trade, you know you 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 want it to go in the direction. If you're putting on a bear spread, I'm sorry, a bear spread, you want it to go down, right? You want the market to go down. If you're putting on a bull spread, you want the market to go up. However, you know it gives you enough. Uh, you know the trade gives you enough uh, um, latitude uh, so that you don't have to be exactly right. Okay, and that's that's one of the powerful things about selling options. All right. Okay. So uh, let's qu talk quickly about risk management and and um, <clears throat> and and daily routines. And these are important, uh, especially that has to do with risk management because you you want to always have that in front of you. So I'm going to give you some just general guidelines for, for risk management. And it's, it's always good to have them in front of you so that you, um, you know, so that you're always, you're always, uh, trading with a plan and, uh, uh, and not blowing up your account. Okay. So you always want to trade with a plan. Number one, you always want to understand what your max loss and risk reward is before entering a trade. Okay. And, uh, you, you don't want to trade more than 20% of your trading capital in any one type of trade uh, and, and, uh, uh, and that way you'll stay solvent, okay? That's just one of the reasons. Uh, do not allow more than a 2% loss based on trading capital and that's if you take stops, you know, stop losses. Uh, there's other ways of, uh, of managing these trades and I'll talk about that, you know, with rolling and adjusting. But 
but just keep that in mind. And some people use 1% actually. So for highly trending markets, position trades to follow the trend. I mean, that's, you know, that's pretty um, uh, common sense. So, and never hold short-term cre credit spreads overnight. And when I talk about short-term, I'm talking about um, one day into zero DTE, all right? So short-term, I, I, you know, I define as one day <clears throat> or below. And so uh, a lot of people ask me that, what that is. And, and it's actually gotten smaller and smaller just because of the different trades that I do uh, that, um, you know, that, that just work out uh, in short terms. Right. And size your trades to ensure emotions are not part of the decision making process. And that's really, really important. And I always say trade small and trade trade often. And uh, the reason I, I say that is because the, the larger the larger your position is, the, the more emotion, um, you know, money emotion is involved with your trade. Uh, so because uh, if you make a loss on that, it's a bigger loss. Right. So it does several things to you. It, you know, first of all, you're not going to be able to trade as much uh, if you get a if you get if you trade a trade you know a large trade and you and you lose, and uh, and then it it psychologically affects you. You know when because what happens is fear gets in, and then you know you're not trading according to your plan but based on your emotion. All right. So especially starting out with with a new trade, you want to you want to trade small and you want to trade often so you get that expertise working for you. All right, pre-market routine. Uh, always look at re you know review uh, support and resistance areas. I use a lot of that in my trading uh, to understand where it breaks and um, uh, and where that support and resistance are, so that uh, you can understand uh, uh, moves in the market uh, with with fencing around it. Okay, and that's that's what really support and resistance uh, is used for. Uh, the U.S. dollar especially for SPX. And the reason for that is because as the dollar moves up, the, the earnings uh, per share in U.S. companies go down because they're, you know, especially, if, you know, if, if they're, if they're uh, multi, uh, multinational companies, those, you know, the dollar, a strong dollar basically counters the effect of, uh, of pricing. You know, it, it costs, it costs more uh, for overseas uh, to purchase. And so it, 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 uh, it does have an effect on uh, earnings per share for uh, U.S. companies. Ten-year treasury. And uh, lately we've, you know, lately we're, we're in that, right, where, um, where treasury bonds, uh, you, you know, when treasury bonds tend to move or bond rates, I should say, tend to move uh, higher, uh, what happens is there's more competition for, for dollars. And, uh, you know, you know, if you have high bond rates, basically you can, you can shove your money in there, uh, and you get a rate of return without uh, taking a lot of risk. And so as, as bond rates go up, money comes out of the, of the stock market. Okay. Uh, review AS futures, futures, uh, work basically, uh, six days a week, uh, 24 hours a day. And, uh, they, they basically will show you a trend um, and, and because it, it works, it works uh, 24 hours and that trend continues where, where uh, the stock market stops and then it starts the next day. Okay? So it gives you a better understanding of the trend and where it's going. Uh, VIX level, VIX, VIX is the uh, volatility index for the SPX and so understanding uh, the VIX up and down uh, and, and, and relative to where you are allows you to understand the, the, uh, the amount of market move there is. So the higher the VIX, the higher the market moves in a, in a certain area. Okay. When the, when volatility goes down, you know, the market, uh, the market slows down and, uh, uh, and premiums also shrink as well. All right. So having an understanding of the VIX and what it does is important. Determine credit spreads, um, you know, and save them and, and think or swim. So when I put on a trade, basically, I'll, I'll put it in and, and save it. And then, uh, and then when the market opens, right, it'll give me a, 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 a better shot at uh, getting in early to catch volatility uh, because, because typically, it, um, you know, on the opening, uh, it's the highest volatility and it, it'll give you the, the biggest bang for the buck if you're, if you're shooting for that. Okay. All right. Uh, post market. Let's talk quickly through that. Determine if rules were broken and why. 
uh, and uh, determine if risk was within acceptable levels for your wins, especially for your wins, because if you if you you know if you're consistently making money and and breaking your rules, it's set, complacency sets in, and it's happened to me a lot. Uh, and uh, and and you go for bigger wins, and then you end up with a loss. Okay, big loss. Determine if tweaks, if adjust, you know, or adjustments uh, to your trading plan are necessary. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'd, I'd recommend when you're trading, you, you want to keep track of what your trades are and how you're doing so that, um, so that you can um, make changes if necessary. Okay. And, uh, uh, and, and you want to be updating your trade journal uh, continuously. All right. So that, that covers the, that covers the, uh, the risk area and, and the routine areas. Uh, so now let's talk about uh, what we're here to talk about, right? The broken wing butterfly. All right. So uh, first of all, there's um, there's a butterfly and there's a broken wing butterfly. Okay. The the butterfly basically combines both, and and this is this is true for the the broken wing butterfly too. Okay. It combines both a debit spread and a credit spread that's shared by <clears throat> by two short puts uh, that you place uh, or calls and two long puts or calls that make up the wings, all right? The long options are equal distance in, in a butterfly. The, the long options are equal distance to the, put this, uh, they're equal distant, right? To the, to the short strikes. And uh, basically you're putting on a debit uh, and wanting, you know, the profit area is in this area right here only. Okay. So it gives you a wide range of area here, uh, that, that it's not really a, a high probability trade. Okay. So, uh, and you're, you're putting on a debit. So the chances are that you're going to lose. So, um, uh, I don't really understand why people use this, but, but, uh, we're not here to talk about that one. We're talking, we're going to talk about the uh, the broken wing butterfly. So the broken wing butterfly uh, is a little different. Uh, the the uh, the the long puts calls make up the wings, but but the furthest out of the money option skips one or to several positions depending how you create the credit spread, right? That you place. And so uh, you can see here, uh, and this is the risk profile. Okay, that you start with a credit. Now the the risk profile shows that as the as the uh, market starts moving more in the money, uh, there's a there's a big spike here. Okay, and to be honest with you, uh, I've traded these and and I've gone through that spike and through the other side too, <laughs> and um, and I didn't see that max uh, gain and and that's an area that you know I, you know and I and I've and I've watch a lot of videos on this too and most people they say that it's it's really hard to get that that uh that max gain okay which is which is here right which is the max gain and so and so the reason you know the, and and this this is a it's a, it's a high probability trade just because uh basically your your uh you you have out of the money uh options and they they work like credit spreads okay but the other side of this is that uh, if it does go through, you end up with a huge, you know, with a credit spread, you end up with with the max loss, right, of of that of that position. But here, uh, what happens if you if it breaches? Basically, you end up with a nice debit spread uh, that covers a lot of the cost in in what happens. And we'll talk more about that. Okay. All right. So um, real quick, I'm going to show you the the two here, you know, so you can see it better. Uh, so that you understand the risk profile and uh, and and how it works. All right. Okay. So now, and and we're, what we're going to do too here is is I actually I'm gonna I'm gonna open up the option chain, and I'm we're gonna create you know we're gonna create a a, a spread right to uh, to put on, and so that way you'll you'll have a a better understanding of how to um, how to create this trade uh, and and put it on. All right. So. Uh, what I'm going to share with you are a couple trades that I did recently, and I can tell you that you know the market just just ripped right through my my trades very very quickly, and it was a time that you know the market was going down, but we had we had a nice you know 
a nice movement higher and then all of a sudden this thing just dropped for three days in a row and and it ripped right through but it's okay you know that's that's to me that's one of the ways that i learn how to how to do this all right and so hopefully you can see this so this is this is the 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 actual butterfly trade that i put on okay so uh this trade here this this position here is the center position okay and and this is where the two positions uh that you sell uh are here so 4360 shares the 43 45 position and it shares the 4365. So the 4360, 4365 makes up the debit spread. The 4360, 4345 makes up the credit spread. Uh, and you can see here that that's why this, this trade ends up with a uh, 85 cent credit. Now, when you're putting on this trade, and this is kind of weird, you're actually buying it to open. You're, so you're buying this position to open and it's giving you a credit. Okay. That's just the characteristic of, of this trade. And so what I do is I use a 12 delta for this position here. All right. And I skip more than just one. Okay. So you can see here that, that, you know, the, there's five wide between these two and there's 15 wide between this two. And that's to give me a larger, a larger credit. Okay. <clears throat> now you can, you can adjust this and we'll, when we go through it in the trade, we'll, you know, I'll show you how, how we adjust this and how the max gain, max loss, uh, characteristics, uh, reside. All right. All right. So what happened? Well, the market, the market went right through that trade. And so what I did was in order to adjust this trade and it's a, it's, it's a pretty manual process. What I did was was I took out the debit spread. I just, I just pulled out uh, from the trade. I, I pulled it out and I closed the debit spread. And then I ended up basically uh, with a 4360-4345 uh, position, right? And, and what I did was I rolled it to 4315-4290 and collected a 25 cent credit. Now, now, because it was breached, right, there was no way that I would get a credit and, and, and be able to push that down without widening the trades. And that's something new that I've been doing this year, all right? Uh, it adds risks. It adds, it adds risk, right? But, you know, if you, if you have plenty of margin in your account, you can, you can do this to these trades over and over again, uh, you know, until the market comes back, right? You know, the problem is, is that we've been in this, you know, recently we've been in this pretty much a bear market and, uh, and it's been difficult to, to manage these. Uh, but this is, this is the best time to, to learn how to, how to trade these. And, and that way, uh, you, you develop that expertise. All right. So, so let's go through this again, right? Let's go through this again. And this is, this is what thinkorswim puts, puts through. All right. So let's, let's go back to, Let's go back to the broken wing butterfly slide here, all right? Actually, let's, let's go to the bigger, the bigger picture here, and that way you can, un, you can see this, all right? So let's, let's talk about the broken wing butterfly, right? So in a broken wing butterfly, I'm putting on two long puts. This is, this is one option. This is another option. One contract, one contract, and then this is two contracts. All right, that I'm selling, and that's basically how you construct the trade. Uh, and you can see here that the that this that this credit side right is further away than the than the debit side, and that's what gives you the credit. Right? Okay. So does everyone does everyone understand that? Is that clear? Okay. I'm not okay. Because, okay, so, so a broken wing butterfly is done for a credit. It's, that's just the characteristic of a trade. Uh, we're, we're, you know, if you want to do a butterfly, then, then you would do it for a debit. Okay. All right, so now let's go, back to, let's go back to the position, all right? So this is the center position. These are the 4360 here, all right, is the, the two options that you sell. So you're selling two contracts of 4360, okay? And then... 
the 4345 is the, in combination with one of the contracts for 4360, is the credit spread. The other contract for 4360 combines with 4365, and that's the debit spread of the trade, okay? And because we have, we, we have an unequal distance between 4365, 4360, 4345, 4360, it, it comes out as a credit. So you're, you're widening this spread in order to give you a credit on this trade. Does everyone understand that? Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. Now, when this, when this trade was threatened, and this, this is what happened, okay, what I did was I said, okay, I need to adjust this trade now. I need to, I need to adjust it so, so that, you know, it, it, you know, won't come back with a, with a huge loss here, right? So what I did was I broke out the, uh, the put side, I mean the debit side, 4365, 4360, which we just talked about, right? And I received a debit of three dollars and twenty-five cents when I when I took that position, when I pulled out the debit spread out of that trade, and I was left with now with a credit spread and a closed debit spread. Okay. All right. I know it's it's tricky and it took me a while to really understand this. All right. <laughs> okay, so so hang in there. All right. And so what I did next was I took the credit spread and I rolled it. So I was left with this position here, 4360, 4345. So that's the credit spread of that trade. I could show it that way, Nate. That's, that's, a, good, that's a good way to show it. Okay? But when you, when you uh, place this trade, you're placing it like this. This is how you place it. And, uh, it, and, and, it, and it's one contract, but it's really two. And that's just the way that Thinkorswim shows it. Um, now, when we build a position, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll show it'll, it'll be very, very clear, right? And so now what I did was I took the 4360, 4345, and I rolled it down, okay? So you can see here, I rolled it down to 4315, 4290, uh, and that's... Um, that's a, uh, what is that, 25? No, 10 plus 15. Yeah, 25. So I, I rolled it from a 15 wide to a 25 wide, right? And I collected a credit of 25 cents. Now, because I widened it, I, you know, I have to use additional margin, all right? And so that's why you don't want to trade all, everything in your account. You want to be left open to be able to manage these trades. And so I... I down a, a long way, right? From 4360 on the short side uh, down to down to 4315. Uh, okay. So yes, I rolled it down. That's exactly what I did. So I went from 4360, 4345 to 4315, 4290 because I, you know, I wanted it to I wanted to de-risk that trade. Okay. And I received a credit of 25 cents. However, I had to place additional margin in order to uh, in order to 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 do this trade. So it was, it was uh, yes, this the slides will be available. All right, okay. So then what I was left with was now taking into account the credit that I received plus the debit, right? You know that I that I also received, right? Then the credit spread that was left was left at you know 43.15 42.90 at 4.35 right and remember i started with an 85 cent credit now i basically have a $4.35 credit this is the hedge part of this trade this is what hedges this trade and when i saw this i thought you know wow this is this is this is a phenomenal trade right and it and it takes the uh, takes the sting out of having credit spreads that you know that are breached. So now what I can do is I can actually manage this trade using this amount. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, I can use this amount in order to uh, manage this trade lower, right? Uh, because I have a I basically have a profit on it. Okay, all right. Now the second part, not the second trade. Now this is the second trade, and the second trade is worse 
you know, for me than the, than the first trade. But, you know, I'm going to show you everything that's ugly here, all right, guys? Everything that can go bad, all right? Um, so I'm not here, you know, I mean, the, the, the perfect scenario is, is that this trade would not be breached. And I have, a, you know, I have, a, I have one on a monthly uh, side. And uh, you basically close the trade for either, you know, at expiration or, you know, or, or uh, less, less of a, uh, you know, I'm sorry, a credit. You capture the credit of, the, of, the, of, of what's left in this trade, all right? Okay, so I put on another trade here. So let's go through this again so that, that it really sinks in, right? 43.70 is sharing with 43.80, right? <clears throat> this is the, uh, this is the uh, debit side of the, the position, and this is the credit side of the position, all right? And I, and I wanted to change it up a little bit just to see what would happen. So I, so I widened it up a little bit. You know, I got a 95 uh, credit here, right? And, um, and then what happened was it breached, but this time I let that thing go all the way down. And so I was left with a 935 debit <clears throat> um, that I received uh, for this trade, okay? And again, what I did was I rolled the 4370, 4345 to 4340, 4300, received a, you know, and, and we were way, way deep in the money, okay? But I, I rolled it down 30 points, received a credit of 10 cents. And the, at the end, I have a, a put spread, but I've got a $10.30 uh, uh, credit that I can use to, to bring this trade down eventually. Okay, to bring it down. So I have I have a ten dollar and thirty cent cushion to uh, to place to to uh, to manage this trade, and that's what I'm doing now. All right. Okay. Okay. Oh, the delta. For, I'm sorry. The delta for the center of the trade I use is twelve. I use a twelve delta for the center of the trade. Okay. All right. Now I I created um, you know I created a couple of these trades so that I can share with you. All right. And these are six DTE trades. Uh, and so at the time, the market was at 41.60. I think we're lower now. And the, the strike price I used was 39.60 here, okay, 12 delta. And this is for a credit, okay? You're receiving a credit. But what it, what it comes out to, and I want you to understand, what it shows is a negative 90. But you're buying the butterfly. A little, it's a little hard to understand, but this is how it works, okay? So I, that's how it shows, okay? And it is for a credit. The max loss on this trade is $907, very similar to a, uh, very similar to a, um, a credit spread, right? So it's, 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 almost, it's almost taking away the credit, you know, plus it's almost like a credit spread. The max gain here is $600 instead of what it normally would be 90 for a credit spread. And that's that that six hundred dollar max gain, where you saw in the in the uh, in the uh, risk profile uh, where that would come out. But I, I I haven't talked to anyone that that really actually got that got that uh, max gain. Uh, and I'm thinking, okay, maybe if I put on a limit order, you know, for that for that particular side of the of the position or, or for the, for the for the position, and and maybe it'll pick it up. I don't know. I don't know, but this is just part of the learning process, all right? And so, so this is how the, uh, the trade uh, pans out, okay? Now I'm going to show you a different, uh, different way to create this spread. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know if you guys follow Shadow Trader. I think it's Shadow Trader. Um, but, oops, okay. But, but what he does is a 132 broken wing butterfly. So basically you're... you're you're putting on you're putting on the long options for the one and two side, and then you're selling the three options in the center. All right. Now on this trade here, same thing: forty-one sixty, thirty-nine sixty delta. The credit is a dollar ninety-five here, and your max loss is a lot more. Okay, it's twenty-three hundred, uh, and your max gain is uh, six hundred ninety-five. And so this is the one three two broken wing butterfly. Um, and uh, some people use this just to get a lot of, you know, a lot of credit on these trades. Uh, and, and, 
I think Shadow Trader does three to four day DTE uh, types of trade. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so so that's that's that. All right. Now let's let's go over the adjustment uh, process here. How much time do you spend monitoring? Well, when I when I put on a you know like like right now I have a I have a broken wing butterfly on my monthly trade. Okay, it's 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 around thirty eight hundred. It's it's somewhere in thirty eight hundred, I believe. Okay, and I am uh, there's really no monitoring of that trade. You know, you just you just wait until. I mean, if it if it gets threatened, then yeah, you have to you have to monitor it. But you know, I I normally put on you know credit spreads for my monthlies, and there's no hedge. You know, but with this now. I'm going to have a hedge for for my for every single position as long as I put on a broken wing butterfly, uh, and if I move over, you know, all my positions to um, to broken wing butterflies, there's always a hedge in those positions. And so, uh, in any case, um, let's talk about the adjustment. Okay, so step number one: you separate the the debit spread from the credit spread. Okay, and uh, uh, use the profit from the uh, from the debit to lower the risk of the uh, of the position. Now I didn't do that. I just, you know, I just went ahead and, and rolled it the way that I normally roll it. But now I'm starting, now that the market's moving down, what I'm doing is I'm using that debit, you know, the the you know what I received in order to to manage that trade and and lower it <clears throat> to get a better return. Okay. All right. So you know step two is close the debit spread for a profit. Okay. And uh, and I and I will bring up the option chain. Just give me a few minutes here. All right. <clears throat> Roll the credit spread using the profit from the debit spread, and <clears throat> apply a new debit spread to the credit spread that was rolled. This is what um, I'm planning to do. Okay. <clears throat> so basically, applying a you know an additional uh, an additional hedge in that trade and making it a bo broken wing butterfly than just the credit spread. So that's that's my that's my plan. Uh, going forward, okay. Um, I'm going to I'm going to share with you the 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 adjustment criteria here. <clears throat> Where are we here? Alternative is to close the threatened broken wing butterfly altogether and place a new but broken wing butterfly, taking into account the loss. All right, which means <clears throat> taking the debit that you received and then and then applying that to the uh, to the new broken wing butterfly. I haven't done that, but but that's something that you know that I want to try uh, in order to uh, you know, to keep that those positions hedged. All right, so let's talk about the <clears throat> the ex entry and exit guidelines for for this. This is a monthly, okay? So thirty to sixty days prior to expiration, during periods of high volatility, use I use a delta of ten to twelve, and shooting for a premium of seventy to ninety, uh, and that's that's what I want to target. Okay. Now this is with a broken wing butterfly. For the bull, broken wing mar market should be trending higher. For the bear, market should be trending lower. Okay, it just you just want everything in your favor, All right? Exit take profit. Uh, this is the same thing that I use for credit spreads: uh, fifty to eighty uh, percent positions that have been rolled, adjusted, you know, and target twenty to fifty percent of the credit. Uh, it's also acceptable to allow the trade to expire worthless if you're ten percent you know, 10% away from the market uh, at expiration time. Initiate a roll 50 to 70 points. Uh, and this is really the sweet spot that I've found for uh, credit spreads. 50 to 70 points. Um, and really, regardless of how much volatility there is, uh, if, you know, if the, if the volatility is really, really low, below, you know, below 20, then you can probably lower that. But even then, I've noticed that uh, it's really hard to get a credit <clears throat> on a on a on a trade uh, lower than than fifty you know fifty points away. All right. Okay. Stop loss. I don't use stop losses on these. I manage them uh, uh, going forward. Right. Okay. What I do here is okay. So this is this is a, a five DTE. Now I'm going to look for the delta in here. All right. So the delta right now is between um, thirty five twenty five thirty five fifty. Okay, and you can see here that there's uh, there's not a lot of there's not a lot of strikes uh, here. So I'll tell you what I'm going to go to I'm going to go to the monthly because I know there's strikes there. Okay, give me a sec. Okay, all the strikes are there. 
Okay, so now I'm going to go to 12 delta right here. Okay, and I'm going to buy now. I'm going to buy the, okay, no. So I'm sorry. So this is the, this is a single. So, um, so 3860 is the center position. Okay. So now I'm going to change this to butterfly. What did I say? 3860? I think I said 3860. We'll just use that. Okay. Now this gave us a butterfly. So you see here the, the one position on the debit side and the one position on the credit side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to amplify the credit side now. I'm going to go to, I'm going to skip one strike and I'm going to go to 60. That gives us a, a debit. No, nope, that's wrong. I need to go to 50. Okay, 50. Okay. So now I skipped one side, right? And I've got uh, the debit side's 3860, 3865. And I got the credit side, which is 3060, 3050. Now you can play around with this. So this will give you a credit of 55 cents. Okay. And so let's look at, and I don't know if you can be able to see this. I want to make sure. Great. Okay. So this is a little smaller. Okay. So you can see here that the max profit is $450. Uh, max loss is $450. Okay. And the buying power is. $452, right? This is a great trade. I mean, it's, it's, it's great. And so that'll give you a, a 50, now a, a 45 cent, 50, you know, for 55 cent credit. Now, if I want to widen this thing a little bit more, what I do is I go to 3845 now. Okay. Now I've got a 90, I've got a basically a dollar credit. Okay. Cause I've widened that. And, and here are the, uh, the risk, the risk basically. So a max profit of five ninety five, a max loss of nine hundred and five dollars. Okay, and the buying power effect is nine twelve. So this is the one that I would probably put on, right? Uh, so you get a ninety five cent, uh, ninety five cent uh, credit, and uh, a you know max profit of five ninety five, which is iffy, right? Again, based on what I talked about. And a max loss of 905. Okay. Any questions about that? Thanks for hanging in there. Uh, hopefully, this was a value to you, and I will see you the next time. All right.